Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I have hopefully a super fun and quick tutorial for us today. I am working on a journal that I'm making with papers by Sylvia with uh, Las Mimas Amores Digitals on Etsy. And I'm on Sylvia's design team. Look at these, aren't these awesome? So this kit, the, the actual journal pages in the kit are made from, what is it called? It's called the Simper Verte. And there are some really fun, beautiful images. I love the bell. And then I'm also using the little girl faces. Let me go back over here. I put this envelope. I've already done some of the work on the journal, but the envelope there, the face, the little girl, is from her little girl faces kids. So these are available in her Etsy shop. She has some other new kids out too. I'll link it for you in the description if you want to go take a look. And they're that shabby chic style, which is her signature, and I love it. And it always causes me to stretch a little bit because I don't do a lot of shabby chic, even though I enjoy it. So we're going to put a little twist and turn this into a Christmas um, junk journal. So very special paper on the cover. I'm going to go grab something that I want to show you guys. I think I told you, uh, actually, two of my daughters, Sarah and Julie, have been to Italy. This year, Julie went with an exchange program at the university she's at and took a watercolor painting class and had a great trip. My daughter, Sarah, went in August of 2023 before she graduated from college, right before her senior year in college. And Sarah brought me back this paper. And I need to go to this website, but she got it in a shop when she was in Italy, and it is gorgeous. And I have been saving it in this beautiful bag. <laughs> and it's one great big piece. This piece is what I used, uh, or portion of this large piece is what I used to cover my journal cover. So I, I don't know, is this supposed to be wrapping paper? I'm just not sure. It's beautiful. It's got a really nice feel, thickness to it. You know, it's thin, but very sturdy. And I decided I've been saving it and saving it and saving it to do something special with, and I just need to start using it because I love it, and the red color is perfect for a vintage -y, shabby chic kind of Christmas journal. So here we go. Sarah, thank you for the beautiful paper. And so I have covered the journal. I want to talk about the, the cover. So I took a piece of cardstock <laughs> and I cut it nine inches by 12 inches. And so the finished size of my journal just has the one signature. It'll get, it'll get nice and chunky though when I finish it. So it's six by nine inches and then that way regular eight and a half by 11 paper fit in here and I can put like I put a little extender on that page I can do some flip outs and I've got I've got plenty of room so I covered the cardstock with that beautiful paper carefully and you know did my corners I've shown you guys that you can go back and find my videos where I show you how to make some of these journals but then I took this piece of fabric and this is from old Stampin' Up Crafting fabric, but it's just it's just regular fabric. And it's got polka dots in pink, red, a blue, and a green, and a really light pink. And I wanted to do the inside, but I always have trouble, have trouble working with fabric sometimes, especially if I'm not sewing, and I did not do any sewing on this. So I did something that I've never done before, and I'm super excited to tell you guys about it. I used this. And what is the name of this? I'm trying to read that. Is that Serial Magic? C-E-R-I-A-L? Serial Magic. I found it on Amazon and I thought, you know, I need to I need to try this. It's quilting and crafting spray stabilizer. And so what I read about it was you um can leave your fabric in a um to have almost like a texture of paper and anyway it is really interesting and I know you guys can't feel it or see it but all I did was I laid a 
piece of this fabric on a piece of parchment paper and I sprayed it. So it was pretty well saturated. You could tell because it's wet and let it sit for a couple of minutes because that's what the instructions said to do. The, the instructions actually said to soak it in a, yeah. No, it says spray it, but just do it in like a sink or something until there's no dry spots and the fabric is saturated. I pretty much did that, but I didn't. I wouldn't say it was like where you could wring any out. And anyway, I let it sit for a couple minutes and then I ironed it and it pressed it. And it was, it was almost like paper and it's supposed to keep it from fraying. And then when I went to stick it down to my paper, I did use double-sided tape. But look, it's super smooth and it has this beautiful texture and it smells good. So there you go. All right. If you're interested in seeing that process a little more detailed, let me know. I can consider doing a tutorial. It'll be a few weeks, but I could do that if y'all are interested, but you got to let me know what you think. But anyway, that's how I covered the cover. And then I just sewed in a single signature and I just think it's gonna be beautiful. We'll decorate the front. But then I started thinking, okay, what do I wanna do? I definitely wanna use some of these little girls and I wanna turn this more Christmassy. So I've already started, I kinda of started playing with it and I thought, well, let's just do a video because I had this super fun idea. I have a stack, let me bring them over, of, these are real vintage postcards. And I got them at an antique store and I, and I left this on here to show you guys what happened. So I guess the lady was gonna pull these out and then sell each, you know, each one individually. And she wasn't very careful or she didn't try very hard. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what happened. I don't wanna sound judgy. But this is that scrapbook paper that's almost like construction paper, but see how brittle it is? It, it, these are old and I don't know, maybe one of these cards will have a date in it somewhere. But she had a pile of these that she took out perfectly. They were beautiful and she was selling them for like $5 a piece. And then she had this pile where they're gonna need repair and they, they didn't do well at all. And some worse than others, right? And so, and these were all in some lady's scrapbook or girl's scrapbook, family scrapbook, and she let me purchase the, the damaged ones. So now I have this pile of vintage Christmas cards, and I think I have some more somewhere. This one didn't do too bad. It still has a lot of that residue on there, but these are going to be great for my junk journal, and we I'm going to make some embellishments, maybe some clusters, some page edgers, things like that to go in this journal. And I thought you guys would enjoy watching me do that. I was trying to see if any of these had a date on them really quick. I love this. Love Aunt Ruth. Auntie Ruth. I had an Aunt Ruth. A great Aunt Ruth. And um, love her. Um, she did pass away. She lived to 99 though. So yay, Aunt Ruth. So anyway, I'll find a way to use that in here somewhere. I'm not seeing a date. I'm thinking these are from like the 1950s is my guesstimate. If you guys have an opinion, tell me. I was going to tell you too, in the kit that has these little girl faces, there's, and I, I punch these out in circles, by the way, they're, they're not circle shaped when you print them out. Um, she put a bunch of little words and quotes, and you guys know how much I love that. So I may, even though these aren't specifically Christmassy, I am going to make sure I pick a few to put in somehow into this journal. Whether I do it today and in this video or not, I'm not sure. But Sylvia, I love the papers. And then I also just grabbed a pile of just kind of plaids and florals that I have of just scrapbook paper that I thought I would add, you know, just add a little more color and some things to it in, in this style. So that's what I'm doing and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm not quite sure what kind of pocket or things I'm gonna put yet, but what I wanted to do was figure out how we can use these vintage, vintage Christmas cards. And many of them are like this. They're that, that old paper. And I, I definitely wanna be careful and I don't want to tear them any more than they're already torn. I think I could certainly mount them on other paper if they're super fragile, but like this one feels 
feels pretty good. And what I'm envisioning with some of these is making them, like I said, flips on pages. So let me, let me get to a page. I don't wanna cover up the pretty images on the paper either, so I have to be careful. All right, this one, I don't really want that. I, mean, I don't wanna look at that, but I could install it like on this page where then it opens up and we can see, you know, the, the writing, and then I could even then glue it down so we have a pocket or a tuck spot there. Let me see if there's somewhere else that I like it. So I kind of brushed. Let's see. And then this one, I definitely have some options to do maybe even like a fun flip like that. And I have lots of cards, so I don't have to worry too much. We can put a bunch of them in here, and we can also make some pockets, like I said, and then tuck them in. Okay, let's put it here. So I don't know if you guys can tell, there is a glitter that I don't have to glue down, yay! And it, of course, says peace on earth. Love, Pearl, isn't the best old fashioned name, Pearl? My grandmother was Opal. Robert and Richard Stewart to wish you the blessings of Christmas. Okay, I feel like this is pretty sturdy, but to be extra careful, because I wanna make this into a pocket, I am going to mount, and I have a scrap piece of cardstock right here, and I'm just gonna mount it on here just to give it some stability. I'll feel better about it, and hopefully it won't tear as we actually use the journal. So the first thing we're gonna do is glue this to the cardstock. And these look like they were literally glued into the scrapbook. I think that's how they did it back then. They had some kind of paste. I have some old scrapbooks that I've bought and at antique stores and places and they, I mean, they're just literally like, just like the whole back was covered in paste or in glue. And there's different ways to try to dissolve it and not tear, tear the pieces. But I always, um, and I've, I've done that with some of them. But like I said, this was a pile I got. And I can't even remember how much she charged me, but it definitely was not $5 a piece. So that's good, right? Okay, so you're not even gonna see that, but it's gonna provide some stability. And just want it to be like a nice little flip open. These little girls are gonna get covered up just a little bit and then with whatever we put in there, but then when we take, take stuff out, it'll be okay. All right, I am gonna glue this, this section together so that we're not accidentally tearing that piece either. This piece I'm gonna leave kind of loose because I like that. It reminds me that it truly was this old vintage card. Okay, I'm gonna add glue and I'm gonna do kind of a thick, like I'm not trying to keep a really thin bead. I know it takes up some of the space in my pocket, but I think it's gonna help with the stability of this flip. So I'm laying glue down probably about a half an inch, maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch, not quite half an inch. Okay, but this is still going to leave us a nice size pocket. And I'm not gonna put this in here to stay, but see, we've got a nice tuck spot, okay? Now, I may, one, one, is this the Aunt Ruthie one? Auntie Ruth, you know, we may do something like that and use one of these if I don't want to attach it to a paper, but for right now, we're just gonna leave it there. Now this one absolutely lends itself to going around a, a page, but again, I'm just not thrilled. I guess we could do it like that and then, I don't know, is that weird? Let's see what we think. Is that weird? I don't know. So what I was thinking is if it got glued like this, so you won't see that side of it, 
and then you go here. You can still read it if you want to by opening it like this, and then you see the little kids hanging their stockings. I know that isn't the way the card was intended. It's supposed to show you, I guess, they're looking from outside the window in. This one says, the boys and I are so very grateful for your generosity towards Boys Town. Oh, wow. They must have made a donation to Boys Town. We pray this Christmas Day that God will bless and protect you and your dear ones this coming year and forever. Father Wegman, Merry Christmas. Wow, that's sweet. Okay, let me just think through where I want to put this. And, all right, well, here's an option, too. We could... How about if we do that? We could glue this section down just onto this paper, and it doesn't, you know, it can be wherever. And now we have kind of a, a crossover flip like this. I think that's what I want to do. I like that. And then it also, hmm, no, it just, it won't, this will just open like this, and this will stay here. All right, that's what we're going to do. Let me decide where I like it on the page. Maybe here. And if I want to, I could put something here. It just looks like, I'm trying to decide if, I think the scrapbook discolored this. I think it was all just um, maybe this tan to there. But I think this is discoloration and this is discoloration that happened in the, in the scrapbook. This is a very thin corner. It almost ripped when it got torn out of the original scrapbook. And look at me. I'm just gluing it back down, too. I was being all critical. They actually just glued it down with paste or tape. And here I am doing the same thing. It's all right. We're not going to panic. It's going to be okay. It has lasted many years, which tells us it will last many more. I, I watched a video somebody did that said that, that, you know, if you're kind of worried about different papers and using vintage paper, look at, look at how long it's already lasted. So, so maybe a fun tab or some ribbon, lace or something. What do we think? Would plaid look cute? I don't mind kind of starting to mix up my colors here. This is Christmas and I think it's fun. Maybe, maybe before we do that, I'll pick one of these plaids. There's one. Is there one that I've already started ripping on? Of course, now I'm picking up all the full pages. I know I have pieces here. Like, here's a piece. Hmm. How about if we have a nice finger tear? I'm using the finger tear method. And I wanted it to be a little bit more narrow. And we'll do this, and then we'll also add a bow or a ribbon, but just to kind of take up some of that space. What do y'all think? Here's the other side. Let's use this side. It has a little more color to it. All right, there we go. I think that is the correct, or close to the correct height. And um, so if you guys are watching, thank you. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you will give the video a thumbs up if you like this content or like these ideas and leave me a comment. Let me know what you're up to and what you're thinking. Um, and also, if you haven't already, I'd really like if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. I have been putting a lot of time this year into my YouTube channel and I'm having a wonderful time. But I would like to continue having a wonderful time with you guys and it just it just helps it's a free way you can help support creators and I know some people I don't know some people don't I maybe they just like being private and they don't want people to know what they're watching or whatever but if you don't mind I'd love a little like and a comment it tell it just tells YouTube that people like what I'm doing and will show my videos to more people or at least that's how they tell us it works right okay Trim that off just a little bit. And maybe, all right, so I've got to think about it. It's going to be like this. So do I want it? Yeah, maybe I'll do it sideways. Why not, right? 
just going to use one of my glue dots. If you guys want to see any of the supplies that I use, um, most of them, many of them, you can get on Amazon. So I have an Amazon storefront. And you can go and check out my favorite supplies and things that I use. So that'll be in the description. It's an affiliate link. Amazon, if you end up choosing to make a purchase, Amazon does pay me a few pennies. But if you don't, no big deal. Um, but you can still look. And again, clicking, just looking around help, helps. I don't know if you guys know that, but it does. And again, it tells Amazon people are liking my content and we'll show it to more people. So... All right, that's cute. Okay, so we did one flip there. We did this flip. Let's see what we can do to save our work with some of these other cards. Look how beautiful the edge on this one is. Um, whatever else be lost among the years, let us keep Christmas. Its meaning never ends. A Christmas remembrance and every good wish for a happy new year. Dot, Harley, Carol, and boys. Very cute. And that's some of the original uh, construction paper from the scrapbook. I was thinking, because there's also this pretty thing, if there's a way to... I wonder if there's a way to use this one without losing that. I don't know. So let's go here again. I've been trying, like having this desire not to cover. See, this is going to be great journaling space. I've got an idea. Nobody have a heart attack. Here I go. I will use the rest of this card for something else. But I am going to cut. I was trying to see if the scallops don't line up. I was trying to see if the scallops would line up. Okay, now I have this, and maybe we will, you know, trim this a little bit, cut off Dot's name. But anyway, use that for something, or even just if I use that image. Okay, so now I have a hinge, and I can hinge it on like this, and then on this side, we'll just cover that up with something. So I'm gonna flip it over, I'm just gonna glue it on. So if you have access to old cards, you, of course you don't even have to use them as flips, you can just use the images, cut them apart, make new cards with them. You know, if these weren't, and I may still do this with some of them, I mean, this is fabulous, fabulous journaling paper, right? But, um, you know, like this back panel, even though it's torn, that would be a wonderful journal spot. So, you know, you can cut them apart. You can use the images to make clusters and tags. Maybe we'll do that with one of them. But there's just so many things you can do with them, even if they're not th this old. Uh, even ones, you know, we've gotten in recent years would be, I think, fun to do a technique like this with. Okay, I am going to use my ruler if I can find my ruler and just do right about an inch. The ruler is an inch wide. And I think I mentioned this before with the time change. I am really like, I'm fine with the time change, but it seems like some days I, I video in the morning and some days I video, or this is what I've normally done in the afternoon. And now I started this video know like three something and it already feels like it's getting super dark outside so I'm gonna try to do a few more fun little things we can do with these old vintage greeting cards and then stop because I don't want it to get too dark and if I use my lighting in my craft room which isn't great I mean it's not horrible but it just there's so much glare and it just doesn't work so the natural light is much better I remember Sylvia when we I first joined her design team she shared tips and tricks for people for filming and she said you know if you don't have good natural light on a particular day just wait it's better to wait don't do it in the middle of the night <laughs> she's trying to encourage us to be patient and here I am so sorry Sylvia I hope you can see this okay that is super cute I love it all right so let's make with 
one of these. Now I printed this on my regular 90 pound cardstock that I tend to use. These, and then I mounted them on the same thickness of cardstock. So it's just two pieces thick to make them more, make them a little more, a little more, a little more sturdy. And then I was thinking it might be fun if I can find something here. Yeah, this is so cute. I'm definitely going to use this, but I want to use this Christmas cheer panel. So we're going to be careful. Yeah. And then we still have all of this we can use too. So I was thinking, let's make a cute banner or something for one of the pages. This page has some nice white space that certainly lends itself well. I just like to flip. I hope I'm not flipping too much. I like to flip some though, make sure I'm not missing anything that would be, that I might wanna use. I'm thinking the blue in her dress and the blue in this bird and then that bright red, that this is gonna be cute. All right. If I put it, I was thinking about wrapping it around. If I wrap it around there, it covers up that pretty flower. Oh, I don't know if I want red on the front anyway. All right, the good news is we're gonna do this. I'm gonna get it set, and then I'm gonna have a little piece of this red to use somewhere else in the journal. It's all good, right? It's all good. Okay, so I am going to glue this down where Oh my gosh, I've got two layers of paper here. Okay, glue this down on the circle. There we go. Where the edge of the, the rectangular piece of paper didn't stick out from the circle. I could have, of course, cut it off. Let me add a little more glue here. Really get it chomped down. And I've got this I can use for some journaling, something, something too. I love having this vintage paper to play with. All right, I'm gonna leave just about that much. I'm trying to do about approximately the same space from here to here. And um, there we go. Now I have this that I can use for something. So I'm gonna save that. I'm not even gonna tear that apart yet. My husband was texting me that he has not even been able to leave work yet, and he's usually on the road by now. He has a monster commute. We live in central Virginia, and he works at Fort Belfleur. He's the first Department of Defense, or near Fort Belfleur. They moved his office here recently. Anyway, northern Virginia, if anybody knows about, I'm going to just glue this down. Traffic in northern Virginia. So, with the... It's actually a long weekend because Monday is Veterans Day and he is a veteran. And um, anyway, so he's got a nice, and then we're taking our vacation, a little bit of a vacation next week. So he is eager to get home, but I'm sure the traffic won't be great because a lot of people have the long weekend. So a lot of people travel. Anyway, there you go. So he's still at work. So I can keep crafting uh, without a problem, <laughs> but... I hope he's okay, and I hate that he's still in a meeting. My watch was telling me that. Okay, more info than you wanted to know probably. Later, we may do some more ribbons or bows and lace and things. Okay, so that was cute, and I got to use one of the girls. Now, I keep, I keep grabbing this one. Like I said, I've got quite a few here. The bells are super cute, aren't they? little angel that goes well with Sylvia's little girls this is pretty look at this ornament and it's got like the peekaboo cut out I love that okay lots to think about I want to do something with this and I'm thinking about making more of a traditional journaling card so let's I'm gonna tear it apart carefully so I want to use this piece. Let's see. It is, just in case you're interested, three and three quarter inches by six inches. And I've got this in 
again, this, this can be used as some journaling space for something. I'm thinking about making maybe a bookmark out of this. Definitely something. I'm trying to save all these special, special pieces. All right, this is, let's mount this on a piece of paper that's a little bit sturdier. I printed, this is actually, it's from my retro Christmas paper kit. And I just thought this kind of reddish color, the green would look good too, went well with the cover of the journal we made, or I made. So let's see, I just wanna make it sturdy. And I kind of like the idea of having some torn edges. So let me, I'm just going to tear off just a half an inch. And that'll be a half an inch strip I can use for something else later. But using my grid, I can keep it straight. There we go. Oh, I didn't do a half. <laughs> I did a teeny tiny strip. We'll see if we can use that later. Okay. But I'm just going to lay this here. And then I'm going to eyeball about the same amount of width around so it looks like it is matted and then the same thing let me get a sliver off this time I think I'm doing a half an inch there we go yes that time I did a half an inch all right I'm just gonna mount this onto this cardstock and again not heavy heavy cardstock but enough to Give it a nice feel. And I may go ahead, even though this is old, and give it a touch of the Distress ink before I glue it down. It had that one torn edge. It had like two torn edges. So, all right, let's glue it down. This is that paper too. It almost feels like um, parchment, really thin part. Parchment is paper, right? But like the old paper. It also reminds me of the paper I used to get when we would send letters internationally. They're really thin um, because airmail was so expensive. And um, so it would weigh less. And it almost feels like that, too. Very pretty. Now, this is just white on the back. And I'm okay with that. But the other thing we could do is we could go back when I said, I've got that really special piece that came off of here. It's got that pretty significant torn corner, but I bet we can find something to put in that corner. So let's just glue this down. Let's use it. Let's use it. This is some of the uh, old scrapbook there. All right. my Even if I just leave it like that, that's okay. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe, you know, something like this or uh, another one of the images from one of the cards. So I think that's what we'll do. Yeah. And I do have to make something for the front of this journal. And I want it to be extra special too. So I'm going to which way does this go? I kind of wanted that torn piece at the top. Okay, there we go. And if I add a little more ink, I don't mind the white, but it'll kind of, I don't know, I'll like it even more. How's that? Cute, cute. Yeah, this is almost the exact same shade as the walkway up to the house. It's fascinating. Now, I could use a portion of this here. Then I also had this, even though it's from a different card. And then I can make a whole nother tag or something out of that piece. Why don't I? I'm going to go for it. I'm gonna go for it. And then I may still use the rest of this paper for something I love, the scalloped edge. And it says Noel Festival made in the USA. Cuteness. All right, here we go. This is um, a fun, fun way if you ever get your hands on, like I said, some greeting cards 
And it doesn't even matter that these have already, you know, like they've been written on. I think it gives it even more character. I love it. Yep, there we go. I'm going to put it right there. And we did sacrifice the words that were on the inside of the card, but I think that's okay. All right. There we go. What a cute, cute journaling card. Does it need a ribbon? I think it needs a ribbon or a piece of lace or something. Hmm. And I've got my Christmas ribbons sitting here and I think just a traditional red will work. Let's just peek really quick though. Let's see. And I have some more somewhere. Of course I do, right? I'm so obnoxious. I don't think that red is the right color red. This is pretty, but there's something about the shade of red. It's just a little bit off. Hmm. Here's some Christmas pencils. I need a project to use these Christmas pencils. Hmm. What does that look like? Polka dots. Is that too much? Yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. And I also have the pod. Let's just do red. We're going to do red. And I think I will use my handy dandy slot punch. Punch a slot. And I think I'm going to do this one like this. We are going to pull it through. This is that ribbon I told you that feels more like paper than ribbon fabric. I'm gonna do it like this. So we get some on the front and the back and then a staple, which I know is a little odd, but I think it's gonna look good. And you're like, well, Pam, why didn't you just staple it on? Well, this way I have um, some ribbon on both sides. I know, a little weird, a little different there. I did it, it's fine. There, cute. A little extra. Now, where are we going to take this? I haven't added any pockets except that one side tuck spot. I do have the envelope, but I don't want to hide it in there. Where did I put that tuck spot? It's a flip. Here, maybe, whoa. It's a little bit with the ribbon doesn't quite fit, but that's okay. I also thought I'd look, see that would be really pretty on the cover, wouldn't it? Now if I do that, I'm probably gonna put another piece of ribbon or a bow there. Oh, y'all, I like that on the front. Don't you? I do. Okay, so this is what I'm envisioning. I am, let's see if I can fix that bow just a little bit. <laughs> now that I did that, I can always take it off. Ugh. I like this. And it's interesting to work with, but it just doesn't always do what I want it to. It, it'll crease. It'll really crease like paper. Just fascinating. Okay, let's see. See what I mean? It'll get really flat. But the other nice thing about it is once you get it the way you do want it, it, it does hold a fa fairly nice shape. And I don't mind, like, when I'm going to put a bow or something on the top of a journal, it may get stuff stacked on top of it, right? Or put in a bookcase, and it's okay if it flattens some. What do y'all think? Yeah. We just have some extra, extra, because it is a Christmas journal. I really think I'm losing my light, so we are going to stop soon. And I will probably publish this. I'm not going to have much more time to work on this before I'm out of town. This will go up while I'm gone probably. Or maybe it'll go up this weekend before I leave. But if you guys want a part two, if you want to see more and see what I do, let me know and I can then pull my supplies out and we can craft some more on it. I kind of like videos sometimes where I do that. Oh, I forgot I made it the pretty on the back. So if I make this the front... We're going to lose that, and I don't want to lose it. I could make, um, ooh, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll wait, and we can add 
some type of pocket or tuck or even a ribbon kind of tuck where this can just sit in here, maybe something translucent. So you still see it and it's the topper, the, decor the decorative piece, but then you can pull it off, see both sides, and we get to really see a lot of this beautiful paper. Let's do that. I'm going to call this video part one <laughs> and consider a part two. I'll definitely can show y'all some pictures or a flip through. Um, but if I get enough interest, if you guys say, yeah, keep going, let us see, then I will try to do that for you. I love the bells and the birds. Okay, so I'm turning this into a Christmas journal. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and let me know. Have a great day.